Welcome back to my channel. A young couple from Manassas, Virginia named John and Lorena Bobbitt made headlines in 1993 when after years of being allegedly raped, beaten, and sodomized by her husband, Lorena cut off his penis with a knife while John was in bed asleep. John denies his wife's accusations and surmises that Lorena's rageful act was likely caused by his request for a divorce. See, Lorena was an immigrant and being married to an American citizen for five years is a requirement to receive a green card. The couple had been married for four. Let's see if further details of the case will help you conclude that one of these two motives is more probable. John Wayne Bobbitt was born on March 23, 1967 in Niagara Falls, New York, where he and his two brothers were raised after being placed in the care of an aunt and uncle when he was three years old. John Bobbitt describes his father as abusive towards his mother before he abandoned them, and that his mother was a nice lady who had a mental breakdown and tried to care for her three sons, but she couldn't. John's aunt and uncle were already raising four boys of their own and describes his life with them as a family that went to church every Sunday and shared a lot of love and a lot of fighting. John enlisted in the Marines as a young man. Lorena Gallo was born in Ecuador on October 31, 1970, raised in Venezuela with a strong Catholic background and became very infatuated with the America portrayed in the movies and TV shows. Lorena's dream to come to America was realized in 1987 when she obtained a student visa and enrolled at Northern Virginia Community College. During this time, she stayed with a family friend who had two daughters Lorena's age. John and Lorena's paths crossed in September 1988 when they both attended an officer's ball near the U.S. Marine Corps base at Quantico. Lorena found Lance Corporal John Wayne Bobbitt to be a gentleman, very handsome, and was impressed by the man in uniform that fought for the country she believed in. The instant attraction was mutual for John, who considered Lorena to be pretty, sweet, and innocent, recalling she could barely speak English. According to Lorena, the couple's subsequent dates were all chaperoned. Lorena denies the accuracy of John's claim to feeling pressured by Lorena, her family and friends, to marry Lorena as her visa was expiring, making their marriage one that he viewed as one of convenience, but that he thought he loved her at the time. Less than 10 months after meeting on June 18, 1989, 22-year-old John and 20-year-old Lorena were married in a small civil ceremony by a justice of the peace, followed by an outdoor uh, celebration. The blushing bride in a lovely yet modest white dress and the dashing groom in his dress blues Marines uniform. This night would be the first time Lorena gave herself to any man. By all accounts, they had a pretty ideal relationship up until this point. But according to Lorena, the first signs of physical abuse began only about a month after they were married when she grabbed the steering wheel in protest, protest to John's fast and erratic driving, and he punched her in the chest. She also accuses John's abuse towards her, evolving into repeated marital rape and sodomy. Throughout their marriage, John describes Lorena as jealous, stubborn, and selfish that they lived way beyond their means because Lorena wanted houses, cars, etc. that they weren't able to afford. After John was discharged from the Marines in 1991, when his enlistment ended, Lorena, a manicurist at the time, found herself as the primary source of income as John didn't seem able to hold steady employment, resulting in their house going into foreclosure. There is no discrepancy between Lorena nor John about the facts of her ceasing birth control without John's knowledge and Lorena was ecstatic to learn she was pregnant. John not so much. He didn't feel they were prepared to raise a child, gave Lorena an ultimatum, either their marriage or an abortion, and escorted her to the abortion clinic 
where Lorena reports John taunted and frightened her as they awaited the procedure. All this considered, it isn't so surprising to learn that there are reports of some six 911 calls placed by, in fact, both parties for assistance at the Bobbitt residence following verbal and physical altercations. Responding to one of the calls made by John, Lorena's mother was present and confirmed that her daughter was the cause of this domestic disturbance. Lorena was arrested for shoplifting dresses from Nordstrom and was caught embezzling $7,200 from her friend and employer, Jana Bassetti, which Lorena claims was out of desperation because she was supporting herself and John. Lorena served community service for the shoplifting charges and there was an arrangement made for repayment plus interest to Bassetti and she kept her job and their friendship. For months, others witnessed Mark Stone Lorena, but it wasn't until weeks prior to the event that she began to reveal stories of domestic abuse in her marriage to family, friends, co-workers, neighbors, even doctors who all advised her to leave and seek a protective order. Only days prior to the night that would make them household names, John told Lorena that he wanted a divorce. Following a discussion as to who would take over their Maplewood Park apartment, it was decided that John would have a friend come live with him and Lorena was to move out. Lorena went to the police station the day before the incident to file a protective order against her husband. Lorena didn't want to wait when told the protective order could take three hours to process and hadn't returned to retrieve it. That same day, John's friend Robert Johnston comes from Buffalo to stay with the couple. Lorena was sleeping when John and Robert returned from a night of drinking in the early morning hours of June 23rd, 1993. What happens next depends on who you ask. John claims he undressed, folded his clothes, crawled into bed next to Lorena, and went to sleep. But Lorena says he went to sleep only after yet again sexually forcing himself on her. Lorena then went into the kitchen for a glass of water when she spotted an 8-inch kitchen knife and made a faithful decision to return to the bedroom, pulled back the bed sheets from John's sleeping body, and with surgical precision cut off his penis. As John awoke screaming, Lorena was fleeing apartment number five, knife in one hand, John severed penis in the other, and drives away in her 1991 Mercury Capri. As she was struggling to steer, Lorena pitched the severed penis out the car window into a roadside field. Lorena stopped at her work where she disposed of the knife in the garbage before continuing to her friend Jana's home. Simultaneously, Manassas City Police were dispatched to Prince William Hospital, where a male victim walked in after being assaulted by his wife. A short time later, other officers were dispatched to respond back to the couple's apartment to locate John's missing appendage. Meanwhile, after hearing what Lorena told her, Jana accompanied her to the police station to report the sexual abuse. When specialists arrived at the hospital, John had already lost about a third of his blood. Lorena eventually described a gassy, grassy field across from a 7-Eleven where John's penis could be located. Once recovered, responders placed the penis into a big bite box of ice and transported it to the hospital. While John underwent surgery, taking over nine hours to successfully reattach his penis, Lorena was being examined at the same hospital. Prince William Commonwealth's attorney, Paul Ebert, was the prosecutor in the trial of both defendants that were facing offenses that each carry a maximum 20-year sentence when on November the 11th, 1993, after weighing testimony, including expert witnesses testifying that when examined, Lorena exhibited no outward physical signs of rape, that her mental state didn't fit that of a victim, and the panties she wore appeared to be cut, not torn. A jury of nine women and three men acquitted John of rape. Prior to her trial, Lorena decides to take her chances and declined a plea bargain where she would serve four months in jail for admitting her actions were premeditated, as she could never become an American citizen if she submitted to a felony. Cameras were permitted in the courtroom during her trial, 
and on January 21st, 1994, after seven hours of deliberation, a jury of seven women and five men found her, Lorena not guilty of malicious wounding by irresistible impulse, which is similar to temporary insanity, and you cannot be liable, held liable for your actions. However, under state law, um, she was sentenced to 45 days at Central Hospital in Petersburg, Virginia. And after six years of marriage, the couple divorced in 1995. This case was resonant of the gender wars of the times and brought attention to the issue of domestic violence and marital rape, resulting in national debate, but also sparked a flurry of jokes, lyrics, t-shirt slogans, advertising gimmicks, as well as John being a guest at John at Howard Stern's 1993 annual New Year's Eve pageant turned telethon, where over $190,000 was raised to assist in the cost of his surgery. Very shortly following his trial, John attempted to capitalize on his notoriety to cover his legal and medical expenses, beginning with forming a band, The Severed Parts, which was ultimately unsuccessful. In August 1994, he was convicted of battery for striking 21-year-old former exotic dancer Christina Elliott and served 15 days in jail. In September 1994, John makes another attempt to generate money by appearing in an adult film, Uncut, followed by Franken Penis in 1996. The Uncut is reportedly among the highest grossing adult films of all time, and Franken Penis does respectably. John winds up more broke than he started. Shortly after his appearance on WWF's Monday Night Raw in August 1998, John moved to Las Vegas where he worked as a bartender, limo driver, pizza delivery driver, tow truck operator, and even a stint as a wedding chapel minister at the Universal Life Church. In 1999, John was placed on five years probation after pleading guilty for his part of a felony grand larceny charge of $140,000 worth of clothes from a store in Fallon, Nevada. He was sentenced to prison in 2003 for violating this probation after being arrested for battery involving his then wife, Joanna Farrell. John was arrested again on charges of battery against Farrell in 2004, and he filed for divorce that same year. In 2014, John survives a crash into another vehicle that ran a red light, but did suffer a broken neck, resulting in a disability settlement. In contrast to John, following the trial, Lorena attempted to keep a relatively low profile. However, she did make news in December 1997 following assault charges for punching her mother, Alvia Gallo. Lorena was later acquitted and her mother continued to live with her. Lorena has been with her current partner, David Bellinger, for more than 20 years. And in 2005, they welcomed a daughter, Olivia, into the world. While working at a beauty salon in Washington, D.C., she founded Lorena's Red Wagon in 2007, which is an organization that helps prevent domestic violence through family-oriented activities. Over the years, Lorena has corrected, collected many cards, letters, and messages from John. Guess he wants to bury the proverbial hatchet. That's all for this video. Sound off in the comments below. Was John Bobbitt a batterer that forced sex on a young, fearful wife so many times that she finally went over the edge? Was Lorena Bobbitt a calculated, jealous woman, enraged over alleged infidelity and threats of divorce, who fabricated rape to justify it? 